Mm. Fluid. FPX7s. Coaxial. Ribbon. If you know of another speaker that is a coaxial design, which means a tweeter is inside the woofer, and it's a ribbon, please tell me in the comments, because I can't think of one. And when they contacted me and said, hey, we make these speakers that compete with the JBL LSR 305s, and we make these. And I'm like, you, you make those? They make normal, you know, studio monitors, and they make these. And I'm like, can I these? I'm like, all right. So, um, I won't tell you the price. I'll be the thing. You click the link. I won't tell you the price. Um, because they're not cheap. Are they the most expensive studio monitors I've done? No, I think the Stealth 8s are still more, Stealth 8s are definitely more expensive than these. Straight off the bat. These, however, are much smaller. And Coaxial is a better design for a desk. Usually. Please see Kef Q100s. Now, self-powered studio monitors, we're gonna sit here at my desk with them for a little while. A little while, just a short little while. And I'll tell you some of the flaws with these speakers, because there's a couple. Not a lot, just just a tiny amount. <laughs> Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a sound demo in the description of this video. So you can actually go listen to these not through a mono head cam. Um, I think they look great. That's number one. I think they look great. And I've had just the most insanely bipolar, like, oh my god, they're so ugly, I get from people. And sometimes like, oh man, I want to just... On those and it's just like I'm, I'm in this latter category I, I love the look of these the exposed rivets and this looks like like it's brushed aluminum but it's not this is a thick piece of plastic heavy plastic that they formed into the waveguide and cut out this port and you can see the recessed lit clear fluid audio logo that indicates power and will dim because these speakers do something that no other studio monitor that I've ever reviewed has done, and they go into standby. That's not normal. Adam Audio T5Vs, JBL Studio LSR 305s. Uh, I got the Mackie up there, the MR624s. I got two sets of Emotivas. I've had studio, so all studio monitors. None of them go to sleep, which means they're just on. And a lot of them, they get hot and they stay hot. And these have, and I'll walk to the back of this one, these have big ass heat sinks and they draw power and they get hot. And what that would mean is if I had them in my home, I would want to leave them on all the time and I'd have to usually go and put them on a power strip and shut them off. Like those Adam Audios. Actually, those Adam Audios are cold like the JBLs. The JBLs are cold. But my big Emotivas, those things got warm and then just stayed warm all day all night unless i shut them off which is what i would do in my living room so these if i don't play anything on them for i th i honestly haven't timed it it's around to under 10 minutes it's it's like 10 minutes in 10 minutes this fluid audio logo which is lit by the way that is it is lit up we'll go to half brightness and you hear a click click and they'll just go to sleep and how much power do they draw a quarter of a watt each because i have a kilowatt that tells me what they draw when they're asleep so when these speakers go click click, they're basically off. And then you hit play music and you've got about a two second to two and a half second delay before it goes click back on and then you have sound again. Which can get annoying. I will, if you're, here's the thing. The reason they usually don't do that is because if you put things in a professional environment on a mixing table, you know, you shit needs to be happening all the time. And if you get six, 10, 12 minutes of silence and the speaker shut off and then you gotta start mixing again, and you get two seconds of no sound, that'll freak some people out. So you need to take that into account. If you're a normal human that's not mixing music, and you're considering these speakers, this is a benefit. I mean, maybe on your computer, if you walk away, they shut off. You want them to shut off. I want them to shut off. I just wish there was an option in the back to say, don't shut off, or shut off in 30 minutes instead of 10. It's a, that's a little thing, that's a little thing. Another little thing. 
See the blue slider up front? That's that's volume. So if I you get you get a D tense at every stop. It's infinity, then it goes up, click, eighteen decibels down, click six decibels down, click three decibels down, zero, and that's interesting. I kind of like the fact that it's on the front. It's weird that it's a slider because those are not known for their precision or, you know, staying not scratchy. If you ever use an old mixer and it's just like, <laughs> it just bounces around, they do feel quality. The detents feel like they lock in place and everything's good. However, and this could just be my pair, maybe I got, a, I got the bad luck. Sitting here being Zeos, which means I put my hand in the port like this and I get centered perfectly and I measure and everything's like, ooh, this speaker has to come down 1.5 decibels. Because I'm, I'm powering, I'm pushing the signal out of my Emotiva um, XPA2, XDA2, it's been a while. And I'm controlling the volume basically in FUBAR here. So I don't have a balance control. So the signal is perfect out of there and perfect into here. And I could set to mono and I could find my center image. And it's always just a little biased that way. It's just a little, little biased that way. That one. And I know it's that one because in the living room it was that one and still that one. We're going to get to the living room in a second. Literally, we're going to literally get to the living room. So sitting here, playing with it, going, that speaker's a little bit, usually, when, like it said in the, LS, in the uh, 305 peer review, you push away. But I know that they're exactly lined. I purposefully measured them perfectly here. And I want them to be perfect. And so I had to, to tweak that down. And to tweak that down exactly where it needs to be between the detents, zero is too loud, negative three is too low. It's floating right, it's actually like it, I guess that's like exactly two decibels down. Assuming that's decibels, because it just says volume, I'm assuming that's decibels. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a discrepancy between them at zero. Uh, if I was using like something like the DBX GORAC, there's little adjustment pots, I could have just fixed that in two seconds, been done with it. This, this is very finicky. It's like, here, hold on. Like that's a quarter of a, that's a quarter of a decibel. And another weird thing is you have to put your hand in front or above and then come back and listen to try to find center. So I'm glad they're in front. It's just very weird. Usually I haven't I haven't really had any that have volume discrepancies between the two, especially at this price range. So I haven't had many that have volume discrepancies, you know, when they when you pack it up, pack it up, two decibel volume discrepancies is a, a pretty big deal. But um it's weird that it's a, a slider. I like the idea of a slider. Uh, but in practice, it's like, I'm glad it's up front. I'm not having to get up and twist a knob and then sit back down, but it's weird. It's just something you got to get used to. It's just something you got to really look at and go, there's a blue slider here. And if you have to adjust it, you, once you touch it, you got to like never touch that again. How do they Baby, sound? you know, you're the one for me. That's Chef. Long live Isaac Hayes. I mean, he's dead, but these are very, very picky about placement. Very picky. That's a chocolate bar under it, all right? I have these wedges, these foam wedges, which I'll, I'll link to what this came from. It's a butt wedge. It's for sitting on. It's so you have better posture. And it was like $11, and I bought it, and I took a kitchen knife, and I sliced it in half and made two speaker wedges. Because actual speaker wedges are like 28 fucking dollars, and I'm cheap. So foam is foam. It doesn't have the little catch, so it can slide back eventually, but... And it's on two separate tables here because of the way the desk is lined up and the monitor is situated. So that one's a little bit tilted up, and this one was a little bit tilted down, and I can tell. I was, I was like, what is happening with the set? And I, I put a chocolate bar under it, and now it's perfect. So that's example one. Example two is uh, when I usually do speakers on this desk, if you go to the sound demo of the little iLouds, the iLoud micro monitors, I keep those three-foot speaker stands, or the, even the LSRs I did on the three-foot speaker stands that sit on the left and right. And I set these up on the three foot speaker stands, which pretty much is like perfect. It should be perfect. It should be perfect. It should be perfect. I didn't like the way he sounded. I thought I was gonna give these a bad review up close. I thought that I was gonna sit here with them on the stands and tell you that these speakers that are over a thousand dollars for the pair are not very good at near field, which is what they're fucking designed for. And I'm not gonna give that review now. I mean, I moved into that desk. 
I had them there for a bit where the I was fixing the volume discrepancy with the um that thing mini DSP and I like them better there than I did here on the stands but now that I brought out the wedges and they're down low they're perfectly fine I was so worried I was so worried I was gonna have to come here and be like man I gotta spit some truth they're fucking fine in fact they're better than fine uh, they sound amazing you, if I kick on any... The word of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is clear. Clear. C-L-E-A-R. Because holy fuck. Now I've got... Those have AMTs. But but the coaxial AMT in this with the little waveguide around it, whoo! What do you want to hear in your song? Oh, you got it. And I have the treble switch because there's you know a treble adjustment on zero. If you put the treble adjustment up, we'll, we'll do that. And I, I keep saying the living room. So hold on. That's you can't hear it because this is stereo and you're uh, but that's like one horn is here and one horn just started here and then there's just that boom right it's this beautiful arch of sound a lot of times i'll turn that arch will be way too high and i'll end up turning speakers upside down to bring it down in front of me right here normal height it's coming right in front of me and back down it's a beautiful thing it's a fucking beautiful thing <laughs> No Led Zeppelin. Ooh, it just did a thing. It's just... This is... I should probably be saying the names. That's Orbital, Cash and Carry. Um, Led Zeppelin, 10 Years Gone. Otis Taylor, Buy Myself Some Freedom. Pearl Jam, Nothing As It Seems. That's where we started. Peter Frampton. Um... Can I get to the point of these speakers? They're, um, they're very, I want to say amazing studio monitors, but I'm going to reserve the word amazing for something. They're very competent studio monitors. I absolutely believe you can mix on them once you position them properly. Once you're sitting at your desk and you OCD get the distance and the angle and then adjust if there's any discrepancy between the two monitors and you get that center image and mono and it's like, I now put in stereo and fuck. It's just, ooh. Oh, and you get your nipples. Your nipples get quivery. Quivering nipples. <laughs> Jumpin' Jack Flash by Peter Frampton from Frampton Comes Alive, by the way. Okay, we're fine. Ah! All right. Detail. I mean detail. I mean fucking detail. I mean, are you ready for this? All right, we're ready. Let's go. Stick a fork in this, kids. We're done. Get the hell off the pool. Shit, or get off the pot. I need some more lines from, like, Airplane. Airplane was great. Let go, you fuck. How's that? Okay. Come on. This review is not taking place entirely in this room. Because I'm going to show you where these babies were born. Were born. By the way, I'll link to the blue and red XLR cables that make my OCD go happy, happy, happy butts. <clears throat> That'll click on. Why would I edit this? Editing is stupid. Editing is lies. Here's the 21 by 9 BenQ, by the way. Hi, Chewbacca. I come to bother you. The people want to know why you're not in the reviews anymore, baby. That's not a fucking excuse. Oh... Okay, now I got cat hair in my mouth for you people. Oh, um, KFR 300s. And uh, I don't want to compare these to those because that's a completely different ball game of powered studio monitor versus passive monitor. Alexa, turn on the amplifiers. Okay. Okay, uh, now the adjustment should remain. I should have it set up because now this whole system in front is being fed from a mini DSP HD over here to the VUs on that and then out to that. So the mini DSP is acting as a DAC and the signal controller. 
and we've got a second wallpaper now. Two wallpapers. You got a, two ruby wallpapers you're getting in this review. That's important. Do I have a good song to start with? Hold on. I'll stay behind my little couch. Wait. When I got these monitors, I put them up in the room here first. And I knew immediately they were gonna be on my shelf and I'm gonna be keeping them forever. Forever and ever and ever. Because no matter how they acted on a desk, holy fuck in a room. Holy fuck in a room. That's within Temptations Forsaken, by the way. Now let's make a tweak. Uh, I'm gonna bump the treble. We should look at the back of one of these. And I haven't adjusted the distance, obviously, but let's look at the back. Get on my knees. We've got a balanced input, quarter inch input, and then the unbalanced RCA. So it comes with the trifecta. You get uh, two adjustment switches, which for a pair of monitors that cost as much as this, seems a little light on features. I know there's the, like the new JBL's crazy series, the one that everyone tells me I need to get, is like fucking computer screens and shit. You just get a high frequency trim, up or down two decibels. And an acoustic space, which is low end, which is negative two or negative four. Since we're running full range of these and I'm not including the subwoofers yet, we're gonna run this at zero. And then you get a massive heatsink, and then you got a switch to decide if it's 110 or 220, and a power switch. The end. That's it. That that's that's it. The real they're real simple, real simple. And you sit down. Ah! You make that sound every time something sharp happens. Now, put in the treble up, here's the thing. I had the treble on zero on the desk. And I just put it to plus two. And I'm probably gonna put it back to zero in a second. Because the word clear is all you need to know about these speakers. Clear. Clear. Holy fuck, everything that's ever happened above, you know, a thousand hertz is happening in my brain. Good girl, Chewbacca. Did I mention they get very loud? Like, very loud. Like, that's... This is Zeos' living room. You need to perform in Zeos' living room. He's got 3,100 watts in his front channels. So if you don't push, and they're not that powerful. They're like 140 watts of amplification each, but it's a six and a half inch. It is a true, it says seven, it's an FPS seven, and it's a, it's a true six and a half inch full size. I don't think it's bigger than that, no matter how you measure it. But, um, They knock. They knock. These speakers are, and I'm gonna. <laughs> They're better than LS fifties in a living room. That's the first thing I thought when I put them in my living room. When I put them here before the R three hundred showed up, because we're gonna have to discuss those because these are also better than an LS fifty in a living room. So there's a sort of connection between the coaxials and the... Shut up. Stop making these reviews so fucking complicated for me. But then again, I'm just trying to decomplicate the comments section. So these are um, better than LS50s. That's... Are they better than LS50s on a desk? I don't... I don't want to... I don't want... I don't have them here and I, it's been... It's been a, my, my, my fucking audio memory in my head. Ooh, but then again, if you wanted to compare LS50s properly, you'd have to get the DSP corrected, 
self-powered versions of the LS50, the LS50Ws, or the fuck they are, which are like $2,000 a pair, which makes these seem like a fucking bargain. Now, are these as pretty? I don't know, but they got an AMT, which is unique as fuck. I, I gotta take the, the treble off, by the way. I just have to, because I don't, no one needs that much detail. And it, it's not like you're cheating, it's just, you know, let's see what you like. See if you like it with a little more, little more, two more decibels of, of tweeter murder. And um, sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's like, oh, that's, I, need to, I don't need to know that much about this music right this moment. Um, if you're going to put on a subwoofer with this, if you're running it on a mini DSP, you could obviously edit out all the frequencies you want. If you're going to run a subwoofer on just, you know, with them, I would suggest you take the acoustic space things and drop it to negative two or negative four. You do not want these trying to push low end if you have a subwoofer in line. Next track. <laughs> Now again, placement is key here. I have them pretty much pointing forward like I would normal speakers. If you really want to get them like working for you, for you in a living room, if you want, if you want, if you want it, if you want it bad, I found that the really extreme like toe in, not crisscross, just just give them to me, Alexa. Set the living room lights, Alexa. Set the living room lights to 100. That's better. Better tubers. And sorry for everyone at home if you have one of those, but now your living room lights are bright. You should be thanking me. I'll get the bill. They project. They work in a giant fucking room. And like I said, on my desk, on this desk, this desk here, they were all right. They're all right. You know, it's, I don't have a lot of stuff going on and you're not getting that wallpaper. I mean, maybe, but fine, three wallpapers it is. So you'll get, you'll get this 21 by nine wallpaper and that wallpaper and the Ruby wallpaper and the Ruby, okay. So here it was sort of like, they're up properly high, they're at the proper height. I liked them here, they were, they were all right here. They didn't blow my mind. These atoms, I love here more than those. On this desk, with those three foot stands that are on up high, they didn't blow my mind. In fact, I was like, oh man, these are really lacking in something. Put them against the desk on a goddamn cafe latte chocolate bar and level it and, and wow. But you put them in the living room, you put them in a big enough room and you could surprise a lot of people. I, I imagine going to like, can't, stop being stupid. She cool now? Good. I imagine going to like Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, walking into a room that I've secretly set up with like a set of these. And yeah, they're over a thousand dollars, but they're not like twenty-two thousand dollars like a normal room at a Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. And I would just play these for people. Maybe I draped them in like silk just to hide the fact that they're not like or I could even ooh, I got an idea. I could put these on top. I cover the logo and I could like dress up a stand to make it look like more of a speaker. And we just play this. And all that like texture. The, the, the t These sound better than half the speakers I heard at like every audio show. Just because that tweeter just, just starts handing you here. Here's all that detail that you need to know about this music. And you could turn it up, and you got a little bit more. And then you could turn the bass down, and then you could play them louder. And they don't really need to go any louder than they do, because they get loud. Chewbacca, you cool in that window? She doesn't usually go in the window, it's very strange. They work better when you're sitting. If you're standing, it's definitely, you, you come like here, and it's good. And then it's, oh, they're just, oh, they're just look at them, look at them, look at me. Do you witness me? This is uh, Yoko Kano, words that we couldn't say from uh, Cowboy Bebop. Because Cowboy Bebop set the best soundtrack of anything ever. That's official. Words that we couldn't say.
These are performers. These fucking things, I don't even know. They should just be branded PA speakers at this point because they're, they're half studio monitor and then they come out here in my living room and just fucking shit on the floor and say, look at me, I'm a fucking powered monitor that could do this. Here's your expectations. Because I've put studio monitors out here before. I put my big um, Emotivas out here. I used to love those for my surround sound. But I've moved on. And I haven't really looked at studio monitors again because I, you know, I have amps and I have things. And then if I throw the subs on, which I'm not going to do. We're reviewing this. I, I'm going to play with it when we're done and put the subs on. And we're going to talk about that uh, there's a delicacy to the R300s that these do not have. Like, I feel like these shove so much detail at you, it could almost be offensive because maybe your music sucks. When a speaker just takes your shitty music and rubs it in your face and says, Hey, 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 your music fucking sucks. That's what you feel like. The calf's amazing detail. Amazing detail. And finally proper low end. But they sort of smooth everything over. There's a there's an air of quality about the calf sound. It's the calf sound. The fluids don't give a fuck about the calf sound. They don't give a fuck about any sound. They're just here to deliver. Here it is. Here's your music. Like a laser beam into your eyeballs. Here's everything about your music, and I love that. I would almost hesitate to say, don't ever put vinyl through these. Every hiss, every pop, every piece of dirt, you could name it. You could hear it and write down the time and be like, oh, that's Jim Bob. Jim Bob the dust pop. Because that's how much information these are throwing out. Listen, just listen to like... We're at like... Nothing. Nothing's happening now, but I can... I can hear everything coming at me. On the cloud of a Look how loud these are. I'm gonna keep talking at this normal volume, and then I'm gonna unpause this, and you're gonna hear exactly how loud this is yelling, like yelling at me now. Cloud of a knowing from the gorillas. Yeah, no. Um. So these are getting an astonishingly positive review. They are uh, like they got they got some issues. They got the issues that like that volume controls a little like why are they but you, you tweak that once and you're good they got the issue of some people think they're ugly i think they're gorgeous another reason i want to keep them here's the thing i think i'm going to put handles on top of them they're 22 pounds a piece i think again i know nothing they're 22 pounds each and i'm going to go get folding like like suitcase handles and i'm going to put them on top and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a cable splitter that goes to three and a half millimeter. You know, whatever, 15, 20 feet. I'm going to roll that up. Then I'm going to get some power cables that go into a single plug. And then I'm going to carry these places like this. I'm going to show up at a fucking my friend's house or a party. And I'm going to be like, yeah, hold on a second. Drop, drop, wall, Bluetooth receiver. And then it's just going to be... Yeah. Portable audio audiophilia, portable audiophilia dot net. It's ridiculous. They're so they are small. They're not big. They're they're almost no bigger than like LSR 305s, which are all put away right now. Look at that's the, the, the last thing, the last thing I, I didn't get to. Is they're not huge. If I pull down my fucking those are a six and a half, those are a six and a half, those are big boxes. These are only about the height of the Kef 100s there, and a little fatter. They've got that fatness to them. They got, look, look at them. They're like they're little babies. They're like little babies compared to the R300s. They're like, look at the little thinness. So, that's the last piece of the puzzle. It's like, they're small. They're not light. I think they're handsome. Other people don't think they're handsome. They're front ported, obviously, which is amazing, again, because that means you can pretty much bash them against the wall. Their detail is absolutely insane. Like, the, the center image here, once they're lined up, is um, unbeatable? It might be the word. It might be the word is unbeatable. <laughs> I 
That the thing to I can't look. I can't. I can't with words. I'm just gonna jack off right here. You can absolutely buy these speakers for your desk if you're doing monitoring and mixing, or if you want to go get a like mini DSP HD and set them up for your television. Well, actually, that might be a terrible idea because television broadcasts are usually shit, and these are gonna expose. All the shit that happens in television broadcasts would sound like every little thing. I've never heard as de as detailed and clear a speaker in the living room as these. And this Kefar 300 sitting right fucking behind them. It's like, mm, nope, they ain't got this. This is brutal clarity. This is beyond like... And they're pretty good. No, this hurts. This hurts to listen to with bad music. If you have something great, which the Dexter uh, soundtrack, the Dexter opening is like. It's so, imp they're impressively clear. And they get impressively loud and they have impressive low end for the entirety of my room. And then if I go and I throw on the subwoofers instead, so that would be that. So now those subwoofers will come on and accompany these. Which removes the low end from the speakers themselves. Again, Mini DSP HD is, is God of audio equipment. So now all the low end below like 50 hertz is getting shoved to those speakers is a good, nice, fast roll off. These have no low end to deal with. So they can get a little bit louder if they wanted to. And everything just blends. It's so loud, it's so loud. I gotta lower this. I'm gonna get. It's so. Oh, I gotta get pulled. Nope. Nope. It's like I'm wearing fucking headphones. Really good head. Like HD 800. S, I can't say 1800, I hate those. Just, this is a distance, this is seven feet at least to that driver. Seven, maybe, eh, is it eight? If I sit back, it's eight. It's seven feet, me leaning forward on the couch. And, um, oh, now I'm pointing them at me. If you go straight on, if you're bringing them for a party or something and you bring them straight on, you lose a little bit of that crazy, masterful center imaging. But, um, they still fill the room. Yeah, no, all right, I have to stop playing music because I'm definitely getting this video demonetized and I kind of need that. Hello, welcome to the family. And I was, I was super con After I heard them in here, I was like, oh good. I'm glad they're worth what they cost. Then I put them on my desk and those stands, on these stands and I was like, shit, why don't they sound that good in here? Then I put them on this desk, I'm like, all right, wait a second, no, they're starting to sound better here. And then I put them on the table here again, and it's like, oh, okay. So they're just real picky. So in the living room, they seem to work everywhere. You just give them a fucking, give them this space, they'll do their job. You give them a desk, it's, it's a little bit harder to, to, to hone them. But once you get it honed and you get that arc of fucking sound, it's, they're beautiful. They're a beautiful thing. Anyway, I think we're done with this review. Uh, check out hifiguides.com, which I'm going to have to start saying that now as we start developing it. Um, there's no speaker section yet, but we're working on that, or I'm working on it, and DMS is helping. Links to these in the description. Links to three wallpapers. This is a th triple wallpaper plus a sound demo with a wallpaper. You guys are lucky. There's literally two of these left on Amazon, by the way, and I'll contact Fluid and see if those numbers are going to come up before I release this review. Because I, well, to the patrons at least. Because if, if someone does want to buy them and I put out a review and it's like, oh, these are not available, then everyone goes, eh, what the fuck's the point? So now I've got to go back to the absolutely spectacular R300s, which, by the way, are also still better than R, than R, than LS50s. Just, just, 
two very different schools of better than LS50. Because from the KEF standpoint to the R300, these are better than the LS50s. From the coaxial, just straight up coaxial speakers, putting in your living room, these are better than the LS50s. And that's where we stand, ladies and gentlemen. So let's pick a random song to go out on, and then I'm shutting this off, and you guys can go watch the sound demo, or listen to the sound demo, or, you know, put it in one half speed and just trip balls to the sound demo. Game of Thrones, Maester. So good. But I don't want to end on that song. Eh. Fuck it! The Z Review! Next time.